What's up, folks? This is Acid Roots. So it's been a little bit since I reviewed something on this channel and since I've done a rock review. So we're going to get back to this with Rob Zombie's Educated Horses. Now, this is his third album. This came out after the Sinister Urge, but I haven't really reviewed Rob Zombie for quite uh, um, some time. It's been a little while since I reviewed him. So the last thing I reviewed was... His greatest hits album, which I think was called like Past, Present, and Future or something like that, but that had some new songs. I reviewed his House of a Thousand Corpses soundtrack, and then I also reviewed Sinister Urge and Hellbilly Deluxe. So this would be the next in the chronological order. And, you know, Rob Zombie, if you're just paying attention to pure studio albums, basically took five years off between The Sinister Urge and then Educated Horses. Now, this is a compact album. It's to the point, has only nine songs on here, minus the two instrumentals that are on here, and then three of those are singles. So it just gets right to the point, and Rob Zombie knows you probably could use by that point some ferocious songs from him and he delivers but this is kind of a strange album just because it tries some new things and that was the situation there so the first couple songs that you hear after sawdust in the blood are the singles american wix american witch and foxy foxy so i think foxy foxy was actually the first single and it's a brilliant song i listen to this song all the time I love the hook on here, uh, the flow of the the rock. I mean, this the complete feel of this song is good. I mean, it, it's not like a brash and destructive song, but it's also a rock song, and it just has it, it, the, the taste to it is a little bit different. I haven't seen too many songs made like within that style. It just kind of has like a groove the way it fits in the song. And plus, I really, you know, like I said, the hook is good. It's one of the better Rob Zombie hooks on there. Amer American Witch is more like uh, Dragula. just does not have the instantly recognizable chorus of Dragula. And, uh, I mean, Rob Zombie really nailed it with the singles on uh, Educated Horses. So, uh, all of these songs are up-tempo. doesn't really try anything different. doesn't try to go for like a left field or um, alternative metal or post-grunge kind of song. I mean, it's pretty much like fist. It's basically just kind of fist pump, you know, com combative kind of music. And I just would have to say that that's good because that's where Rob Zombie comes from. Still has the horror themes, a lot of creepiness, a lot of ethereal kind of ghostly type stuff on there but at least the you know you can say for one thing that the metal happens to be pretty harsh on here so that's definitely a good thing let it all bleed out is probably one of the more vicious songs it's kind of a lot like super beast kind of the same tempo of everything that's probably like the most ferocious of the three singles which is surprising that he would do that on the third one but i'm glad that there were actually three because he could have just tapped out at two or something like that but for the most part, Rob Zombie doesn't really ever go past three singles, but I'm glad that all three of them were excellent. I mean, he gave us nine songs, a third of the album was singles, radio songs, and, uh, you know, he delivered. I mean, they didn't suck, I didn't have any complaints about them, so can't really complain about that. But there were actually a couple of other songs that caught some noise, and one of which was Lords of Salem, which was actually nominated for a Grammy a, a year and a half after it came out or almost two years so lords of salem was <clears throat> like i said nominated for a grammy and uh that one that song basically sounds like a cult song i mean it really has for some reason that's one of the creepier songs on this project i mean i think that's kind of the idea considering that there was a movie called lords of salem but really feels like some abandoned kind of cult town like you were gonna rise up and do something like jim jones or something but uh yeah i mean it's interesting to say that you know it's kind of the situation there the devil's rejects was another one i mean that's kind of the one of the more obscure obscure songs but i did like the way i mean both of those songs devil's rejects and lords of salem could have been you know, late par singles if they wanted to. I wouldn't have complained about it. But also, uh, 
they just were surprise hits on the album. I mean, considering how short the album is, the fact that we're talking more than four songs that actually kick ass out of nine, that's extremely good. So yeah, but those are the basic album cuts. So the songs I recommend to you now, we'll just talk about some of these. So I, out of 11 total songs, I'd recommend six, which is Sawdust in the Blood, American Witch, Foxy Foxy, Let It All Bleed Out, The Devil's Rejects, and Lords of Salem. So there weren't as many Rob Zombie album, album cuts as I would have liked, but that's not the end of the world just because considering how short it is and just the fact that the singles are so good, that kind of makes up for it. And plus, if you can find this album for cheap, considering it's like 14 years old, I just would have to say, you know, it's pretty much a steal at this point. You know, just the fact that there's more than three hits on here. Sawdust in the Blood is an instrumental, but that one completely grooves past most instrumentals I hear on such things. It's really creepy. It's really ominous. It's really haunting. Rob Zombie doesn't have any vocals on there, but it does its job effectively. It's a little. I wish it was probably like 20 seconds longer. It would have been even more brilliant. But for what they were trying to do, they kind of nailed it. It's a nice little mini intro of some sorts. But 100 Ways wasn't quite as good. I mean, that felt kind of creepy. But uh, I was trying to think of like how I would listen to such a thing. You know. I mean, this is more my opinion, me being opinionated, but I mean, both of the instrumentals are, you know, above average, but I just, I couldn't gel as much with the hundred ways, but you know, the other only, the only other complaint is just the fact that some of these album cuts didn't really, uh, take over that well. Like I felt like death of it all ride, you know, scorpion sleep. Some of these were. Uh, I mean, Rob Zombie tries some different stuff on some of these. You know, he doesn't really have, like, the heavy metal or industrial metal that's on, like, Lords of Salem and Let It All Bleed Out. So if you're looking for more songs like that and you think you could find, like, some extra hits in that regard, something that could be played on rock radio like, you know, Back in Black does, it doesn't really have that. You know, Back in Black by ACDC. You know, they play just about every song off of that on the radio where I'm from. But it's it's an above average rock record to say that. I mean, I was surprised just by the fact that there were how many gems on here. So uh, I would give this record, uh, considering that I like 6 out of 11, I would say about, you know, 6.5 or a 7. I guess I could just give it a six and a half just because I would have, I mean, if it would have had like one more song on here, I probably would have given it like a, a seven and a half or something, but it just had a, a few too many album cuts, one of which was just an instrumental that was good. So that's really only five songs. So you, you kind of, it's like you like half the album, but you also don't like half the album. The instrumental is kind of right in the middle. But uh, So six and a half, it's a haunting album. I appreciate that. The social score gets like an eight just because it had three singles and they all hit very well. I, I might have liked like a fourth single just to completely seal the deal. But Rob Zombie was, had been rather quiet. I mean, just between like him only dropping two full albums in the 2000s, uh, I don't know what I don't know why he just took so much time off. He was doing a lot. I mean, he did movies. He did a House of a Thousand Corpses and movies like that. He was getting into the horror genre, so he had a lot that he was trying to do. But I think Rob Zombie, in some cases, it seems like he likes doing movies more than he likes doing music because he did have White Zombie back in the '90s. But I mean, the, it, this kind of felt like the promotion for educated educated horses was so short that uh, this was kind of the thing because i i don't ever hear american witch or foxy foxy on the radio and i don't know why i don't i mean i hear dragula all the time and living dead girl but those are about as far as rob zombie really gets taken which is too bad because you know this album has some gems on it but yeah so uh six and a half out of ten eight social social score means that you know, what it would play around your friends, you know, casual listeners, people who don't immediately like the things that you do kind of thing. But there you go.